Well, hello. Hello. So today I'm joined by Mandy Hayburn Little, and hopefully I pronounced that right with some with some luck. And you are the chief executive of BRIM, which is the Business Resilience International Management. And uh, you're rolling out a, a lot of uh, centres for the UK government in partnership with the police, right? Is that correct? Yes, so we're rolling out a whole series of cyber resilience centres, which are a unique partnership between academia, private sector and policing. Wow, wow. Uh, so I'm, I'm quite interested in, in hearing about that because I've obviously had, had my own experience with, with cyber security on the, on the bad side of things. And um, I think anything that's going to help uh, small businesses to break free from, from the risk uh, and the stress that, that it causes is, uh, is, you know, it's got to be a good thing, right? Really. And um, so I think firstly, we can, can we talk a bit about ethical hacking? And because and, I know you know quite a bit about that. And you said something about this, this curious Frank, and I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more about that. Yes. So the first resilience centre and this model has evolved from that, was in Scotland. And I was chief exec there for nine years and a great privilege to be so. And with one of the universities there, we started to look at what would be the next stage of students learning? What would be the most practical aspect of cyber resilience that we could then in turn support both the students, but then go into to business and to offer that? So Aberty University have a course in pure ethical hacking. And since then, there are, of course, a great many other universities offering similar and really excellent courses. And through that, I became very interested in the concept of students who have enough support and obviously enough resilience around them to go into business and to advise them from the hacker's perspective, but doing it for the good, obviously, as to what a hacker would be looking for. So what would the bad guy really be going for in your business? And from that, a number of very clear modules came about, which we've now produced into the sub-brand of the resilience centers, which was called Curious Frank. And Curious Frank is two of the descriptors. So in order to be part of that, you have to be very curious in your mentality and actually to be interested in ethical hacking, you have to have that curiosity to say, how could I get in? How could I look at that? What would that add up in terms of if it were a malicious attack? Um, and Frank, because actually you do have to be quite frank and say to business at times, that's what the problem is and this is how we can help to resolve it so there are very accessible very friendly often quite funky team who go in and we're now iterating that with the support of some fantastic universities right across the rest of the uk so it's a great privilege to do that wow that's 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 really really quite uh quite interesting project you know i mean i think because the knowledge of this within certainly within the small businesses uh and people have a very very uh, shallow knowledge don't they of 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 this um so what what's what's the what's the new age of cyber policing look like well i think this is a, the best example ever i would say that <laughs> Uh, of cyber policing. But for me, um, I am really supportive of the work that policing are doing. And often they become a target in terms of people saying, well, they don't really get this, they don't understand. This is a really prime example. So the National Police Chief Constables have an association called NPCC. And with funding from the Home Office, they've supported all of this. And it means that they've looked long and hard at what policing needs to be in a cyber age. So there was a time when people talked about different eras and digital era, that's gone. So we all now live and breathe in cyber um, times. And the more we can do to understand that. So the traditional image of police concentrating perhaps on what was physical security, very physical resilience, that's gone. 
they have some of the best people now working for them um, in terms of cyber skills. So they have the regional organized crime units. Every area of policing now has cyber KPIs. A lot of people don't know that, that actually all of the cyber crimes are now being investigated. So the chief constable who has the remit for that national cyber portfolio is Peter Goodman. And his vision, along with his deputy, Andy Gould, has really been, I think, quite exceptional. And it's meant that we've been able to bring this model where academia, private sector, and policing work together. And why I think that's so important is because it's a recognition that there's no way now policing alone could support the level of cyber scamming, of fraud that's going on. And we've got to be practical about that. So there's a huge support for the policing and, and actually we've seen great examples of that in the current situation. But people in the private sector are often investigating. So if you speak to the big consultancies, if you speak to the banks, they already have their own really exceptional cybersecurity. So they are very willing to support policing and they're very keen to work with policing. And the more we can find that sort of sweet spot, if you like, the more we can find that nexus of saying both private sector and policing have the same aim nationally, which is to make the UK really cyber secure, and then to work together in this way with many other partners, and including the NCSC, and I hope we have the opportunity to speak about that a little bit later, but um, there's a huge amount of activity now just to align the policing cyber strategy with all the work that the big private sector companies are doing as well. So great time, really exciting time. So what's the, N did you say the NCSC? NCSC, so the National Cyber Security Centre, ah. which, which has the remit for looking after us all, but also from my perspective, really importantly, excellent toolkits of information for business. It's free. It's acting on behalf of national government. So every day they're putting out guidance and just now, particularly with COVID-19, that is the trusted source. So whenever I think about cyber security, and I know some people don't even like the term cyber security, but it's actually about where you can get trust that's going to make people feel, first of all, confident, and secondly, in control. And that's ultimately our aim is, is to help people. So the NCSC through the Cyber Resilience Centres, we will be promoting very widely all of their advice as it comes out. And I would encourage people, particularly just now, to keep an eye out for, for their latest guidance on all the scams and so forth. Yeah, I mean, there are certainly loads and loads of scams, aren't there? It's, it's crazy. I mean, you know, you, especially when you get like a phishing email and, it's, and it comes in and, and, and it looks like it's from the actual company and, and then you reply to it and then it creates a whole chain of events doesn't it uh, almost an auto probably an auto sequence of emails that they're designed to extract uh, extract money from from the business that you may be representing i mean i think that's that's at the moment a big worry um you know changing account numbers for for payments and things like this is it for, for me I've, I've i've heard a bit about that recently you know there's been a lot of that and i think Sadly, the reality is that whilst our companies are governing, governed by audit controls, by a series of processes you have to go through, if you're a, a malicious attacker, actually, you don't have any of that. So you might think, oh, here's a great scam, we'll try that. Yeah. So you can just put all your resources into that and you can work. And sometimes attacks are targeted, of course, but often they're just going for the lowest hanging fruit. So that common phrase, where can we get in? We're actually not really interested in you as an individual. We just want the cash. We just want to go. So however they can get in. But just now, I think it, it's really sad just now because of the number of vulnerable people who do need to be online. We all need to be online. We all need to feel confident. And that's why, again, the NCSC guidance, I think, is really, really important. And the cyber resilience centers are there for people to phone up, to say, I'm just not sure about this. I've seen that. 
And of course, action fraud has a huge part to play in this as well, in terms of reporting where these things happen. But so often it can happen that people just don't know it has happened until it's too late. Yeah. So, of course, the, the main thing is really not to just knee-jerk, not to click on links, not to open things just by, you know, making that link directly, but also to be realistic. And the banks keep saying, we're never going to ask you to move all your money. We're not going to ask you for your PIN details. And yet it, it still happens because they can be so persuasive. So it's very sad at this time, and particularly apt, that we all work together to support everyone, I think. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think at the moment, in particular, it's a, it's psychological, very psychological, uh, in terms of the way that they're instigating these attacks on people. So that whereas uh, a few months ago, you wouldn't be under so much stress. Uh, now you're under so much stress, you're exhausted, maybe you're, 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 you're trying to work out where your next payment's coming from, if you're a small business. And then you're so stressed that you click a link without meaning to. And yeah. that's, and that's, that's the easiest thing to do. Um, I mean, I did an interview, let me see, a couple of weeks back with um, Tyler Cohen Wood. She wrote a book on catfishing, which you've, you've probably seen. Um, and you know, we had a good conversation about that and, and it's, it's really good that you're, that you're doing this. This is a great initiative because we need to have world-class security. If we're going to, if we're going to rebound from, from this situation, we need to minimize the risk of, of, uh, well, minimize the damage. I'm not going to say, I say minimize the risk, but minimize the damage as well, because it's, it's, it's not a matter of like, really, I heard it's not a matter of actually if you're going to get hacked, it's more about when it's what, that's what I've heard. <laughs> well, the reality is, is we live in a world where everything can feel very insecure, but we're really keen to stay away from fearsome messages because fear isn't going to help any of us. So we need to provide practical, positive, accessible advice. And, and that's what we're aiming to do. And the police have been so supportive of doing this and really working with the centers, working with the students. And when I see the enthusiasm that's coming forward from the police leads to do this, it's absolutely fantastic. And these are people who, quite frankly, in a commercial world, could go off and earn a fortune, you know, in the private sector because of their skills. But that public good element to the centers, I think, really does make them unique. And I think that's why universities are so keen to see the students and the students are, are really really great fun but they are thinking all the time with that extra sharp brain about oh how could somebody you know make use of that information and social media you know we, we've talked a lot recently about the various elements of video conferencing what you can trust what you can't what you should be sharing but I see every day on social media, and especially, I get it, when people are bored, they're thinking, we'll do quizzes. You see, you see some of the quizzes that are going on where people are giving away <laughs> everything about their personal lives, their personal data, and often it's without thinking. And I've, I've had discussions with friends who said, oh, you're just getting paranoid because that's your job. But actually, it's not. You know, no. the more you give away your mother's maiden name, your dog, you know, the house number you're in, all of these things, if somebody really did want to, they could start to add them up, of course. And so we just need to encourage people to really take time to think about what they're putting out there. And also, it's really hard to get rid of stuff when it is out there. So again, um, I think we've all seen people posting things late at night where you think maybe not a good yeah, idea. <laughs> very much so. I mean, yeah, uh, there's some awful things and we, you know, it, it's not, it's not, it's not easy to control yourself if you've maybe had a drink or if you're emotional, you split up with your girlfriend and whatever. Right. But at the end of the day, you, you need to take control of, of your online presence. Right. And um, I mean, I, I interviewed someone the other day from an app called Jumbo. And what Jumbo does is it, is it alerts you to uh, breaches. It alerts you to, uh, and you can plug in all of the, all of the social networks, uh, not every single one yet, but his plan is to grow that into a, a, a basically a control mechanism, which is stored on your phone. 
So there's no information going to the cloud. It's stored on your phone. It works on your phone and then it will recall information. So for example, if you've had Facebook posts that, um, you know, perhaps older than a year, it can, you set the setting and you say, I want all those posts gone and it will go to Facebook automatically and it will delete all those posts and take them down. And then you can actually take them and store them, I believe on your phone. So there are these solutions, but we're still at early days with that. I think give it another couple of years, the more platforms that he puts onto that, that's going to give a very, very good control mechanism for someone that, excuse me, really wants to actually look after their, their online presence. I mean, you know, when you sign up to Google, you, you, you know, you need to go in there and look at the settings. I mean, I did it with my daughter, like I was saying to you before yesterday and, and, and you go in there and you're like, Oh, so uh, this is storing everything that I do online and people, people don't even realize half of these people. And, you know, I appreciate Google needs to make money and, and this is a business, but the more you tweet, the more you, the more you post on Facebook, the more you, the more you post on LinkedIn, the more of a personality profile is built up on you uh, with, within certain tools. I, I use these tools and I can profile someone in, in once the report is finished and I can look at their followers. I can look at where they come from. If they're from India, if they're, if they're, uh, you know, fake followers, I can, I can get a good idea if they are, but I can also look at their personality profile and I can say, well, actually they are very susceptible to online advertising or they're very, and I can work out based upon personality insights, what, they're all about so then i can use certain words that would that would resonate with them and then i can get them to do something and that's basically what these hackers are doing but they're doing it on a mass scale and potentially they have access to these tools as well i mean yes so th they do have access to these tools but i but i am an eternal optimist people will always say that about me me too and and actually, I don't think the world is, is going to hell in a handcart. You know, I, I think actually there's great positives that are emerging. It's an extremely difficult situation at the moment for everybody. And I, I fully appreciate that. But there are some really great things going on. I think this is a, a great example of universities saying we have outstanding talent coming through in the UK. Um, not just in, in ethical hacking, but in forensics. Um, interestingly, we've had quite a, a, a good challenge recently from industry to say, are we doing enough about the variation between IT and OT? So um, actually understanding critical infrastructure. So it's not just about systems, but actually what are the core methodologies of systems management? We've got so much going on in AI, so much is going to happen with data. So there are unique examples, I think. And one of the things that will come from this situation is how business chooses to operate in the future. So those three points about trust and control and confidence will be really, really vital because we'll need to be able to move e even more in an even more agile sense. And that really excites me. So what can we do to provide business with resources that are ahead of the curve? What can we do that's going to preempt where the threats are going to come from? And what can we do to make them feel great about the fact that actually they are managing their business? So working with partners like IASME, who provide all the cyber essential certifying companies, because they're also close partners, all of those police, regional organized crime units, the protect officers who are so well known for the threat intelligence, the threat perspectives, and then on through to NCSE. So it's a real, if I could draw it on a bit of paper, it's a triangle, it might even be inverted, with the free information, student services then available, then the IASME partners, and on to big industry. So we're really keen to have some of the larger companies uh, involved in each of the centers. So if anybody wants to do that, please give me a shout. Um, we've had some fantastic examples of people saying, actually, in terms of aligning that police strategy with the private sector, we've all got to think about supply chain. We've all got to think about being 
better in terms of customers of the future, which is another um, real interest of mine, what will the online customer of the future look like? And actually, how can we service that? Because the more we get into understanding, and I know you're really into understanding the psychology of people and how they interact. Trying. <laughs> but more and more people are operating entirely by self-selecting their feeds. Yes. So we're in a really different environment now. So if you are a large business and you are dependent on engaging online and being really dynamic with your customer base, but nobody is taking your selected, nobody selecting your feeds of news or guidance, there's something really wrong with your communication strategy. <laughs> yeah, so there, there, there is, and, and we've all got to think about that. <laughs> no. I'm sorry, that's hilarious. You're totally right. You're totally we, right. We've all got to do that. And, yeah. and we live in an age, particularly for the generation of XYZ, who are becoming business entrepreneurs, I mean, they've often said to me <laughs> with my students, you know, too long, didn't read it, Mandy. Too boring, too long. And That's think, the point. Ah, okay, so hence, you know, when it gets to the business of the future, how they communicate, the information they put out, how manageable it is, manageable it is and that includes security advice. It's got to be really sharp. It's got to be really online with thinking and people have to get it and want to read it otherwise you know we all spend you know hundreds of thousands of pounds nationally and internationally and people don't read it so it's important yeah well i think that's where the customer stories uh, come in i think i think customers we're in the age of customer story right i mean though that just excites me when i when i hear about some of these stories i mean there's a guy um, up in Manchester who's doing something interesting with Oracle, uh, I think Oracle AI uh, data technology. So they're analyzing images for reducing amputations. So they can actually say, well, you know, based upon at scanning all of these images and all of this data, and they can look at it and say, well, actually, that guy doesn't need his leg chopped off. Yeah, and and that's reduced the amount of um, of of, uh, of amputations dramatically, and you've got some super interesting stories, you know, about how people are using uh, AI and, and and data, and and I th I th I'm I'm really excited about the future. I think I I, I also share your half glass um, full, yeah, uh, attitude, right? And yeah, I think um, being resilient is is crucial though to this right and and that comes in a personal sense but also in a business sense and i know that's a big topic of yours it is it's a really big topic <laughs> um, so i'm conscious that i can't launch into all of that but uh, for me business is people so you can badge it any way you like you can put names on it you can box it you can position it package it and promote it but actually, it's all about people. And that's why cybersecurity remains so crucial to all of us, because it, it will be the people where the, the fallibility is or where the weak link is or where somebody was just unsure. And there's nothing worse in the world than feeling stupid, you know, and, that, and that's a really big deal. So for people to be able to say, I have been hacked. Um, and actually, we're talking about, you know, apps and things earlier on. And there's still relevant today is that really good site, Have I Been Pawned, P-W-N-E-D. Go and have a look and it will show you if your business email has been compromised and it will show you immediately. And then you know to act. So we need to all work much more on the tools just to say these are the things. But ultimately, it's people. It's you and me. We're all similar in that sense. You know, we all have vulnerabilities. We all have off days. We all have days when we're down or we're maybe not thinking. But it's the internet and the, the way we are now all working together is all about that system where you need to have the controls, have the confidence to do what you really want to do and enjoy it and to make, you know, to, for it to be fun. That's really important. 
Yeah, I agree completely. But resilience is such a great, it's such a great thing in life, right? It's, it's, um, once, once you, once you really become resilient, you can, you can do anything like in life, really, you know, that's, that's my attitude really. And it's just withstanding, uh, whatever it's thrown at you. Right. But in terms of, in terms of cyber, uh, security, you need to have a plan, right? Like if, if something happens to your machine or your data or your, you know, whatever your property, you need to have a plan of like, well, where did I back it up? Okay. So what do I do to retrieve that backup? How do I get my website back online? You know, these are small business problems, but they're problems for every business small medium large they all have the same problems yeah and it's like well so then how do you recreate that website really quickly how, how do you do it if you don't know how to do it you need to find someone who does and make sure that they tell you how they're going to do it right i mean yes so the the policing cyber resilience centers will carry all of that information but it's a really good example so if i said to you today you know i'm going to give you a stash of gold Hooray, you know, lucky you. There you are. You've got hey, there we are. <laughs> I've given Thank you, you that and you can do what you want with it. You know, you're not going to put it out in the street and put a sign over it saying, I'm not guarding this, I'm not looking at this. And you're not going to just leave it in a shop and, and watch people walk away with it. So actually with businesses, it's about simplicity, I think, and saying to people, What are your crown jewels? So you might not think that's going to be really valuable. That's where ethical hacking, of course, comes in again. But what are the things that you have that other people would be able to use, to manipulate, or to extract things from? So you might not have millions in your bank account. I'm assuming you do. <laughs> I, I want millions in my bank account. <laughs> But, but actually, the criminals and malicious hackers are looking for, for that access. What's that really super easy way in? How can I do that? So you talk about tools and resilience and being able to get up again. And I'm really sensitive at the moment to, to businesses who are in closure or furloughed. Yeah. And we must do everything that we can to support that. So the, the NCSC, again, if I can mention them, they have the, this full set of toolkits of guidance. So a board toolkit, uh, they have exercise in a box, which is brilliant, mm -hmm. which is exactly what it says. So supposing an incident happened today, here's everything you need to know. And you can then look at in advance, I need to have my backups ready. I need to know how to reinstate where I want to start from. I need to make sure that I can communicate. And there's some really good examples of live testing within that. So I'd absolutely encourage you to go and have a look at that. And that, that will show you um, how to think about communication in the wider sense. So people sometimes think it's just about my laptop going down or it's just about I don't have email for a day, but it's not. So supposing you have no mobile phone, supposing you've lost everything, actually, how on earth do you start to communicate to your customers, first of all, that there is an issue, that it's going to be resolved, how are you going to communicate that publicly in a way that isn't going to be too damaging to you, but, but it's swift for customers, and then how can you make sure that your assets, those crown jewels, are really protected? So... It's a very exciting environment, it's a very fast-paced environment, but it's one where we've just got to do everything we can to make sure that people feel really safe. Yeah, yeah. It's not nice. It's not nice when the worst happens, you know. But it's but when you when when you've been through it, and and you've I mean, I I interviewed a very very high-profile cyber security guy. Yeah. CS, CISO, um, you know, he basically sat outside the Houses of Parliament about 15, 10 years ago and hacked, hacked the government from sitting out in his car. They didn't really appreciate that very much. But he, but he, I interviewed him for a project I was working on for IBM at the time. And, and um, it, it was, it was interesting because then I got a friend request from someone who was the same name, yeah, uh, on Facebook. And uh, I actually never forget this. 
I had my laptop open. Um, I had my Facebook open on my laptop. I accepted the friend request via the app uh, on, on my browser, which was a Google Chrome browser, accepted it. Within 15 seconds, my website that I was working on in the background on another browser window died. It was completely wiped out within 15 seconds. It, it, it was literally accept friend request and immediately it obviously triggered something that jumped over from the Facebook through my, through my router into the, into the other browser window. I'm not quite sure how that works. And literally my website was dead. It was absolutely dead. Wow. The door now within, well, within 15 seconds. So, yeah. so that's the point where you go, hold on. That's my shop window to the world. Yeah. yeah. What, what do I do? So I, first of all, I panicked. Yeah. And I, and I just went, I was like, Oh, what do I do? And then I remembered that, my friend runs the hosting business that I use. He's been a host host for 20 years. Yeah. So he runs, he runs all my, my website sit on that platform and I log into the, so he's got a 30 day rolling backup. So I log into the back of the system, uh, download the backup, upload the backup and back online in 15 minutes. Yeah. But I hate to think if I was someone who didn't know how to do that, even for me, it wasn't easy because it's a self-service platform. He doesn't make it easy because he doesn't want people asking him questions, right? He doesn't want that. It's not that kind. It's 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 kind of for techies, and I'm not really a techie, so for me, it was it was not easy. Yeah, but once you've done it once under extreme pressure, you know that if it happens, <laughs> all right, you're gonna waste my time again. Five minutes, okay, good for you. Yeah, it's my attitude, right? Yeah. But it could be so much worse than that. If you've got customer records, if you've got, you know, and, and, and I, th I agree with you that the communication strategy is, is super important. Um, it, it really. is. Yeah. And you mentioned business networking in, in that sense and, and friend requests, and we all are susceptible to that. So I get a huge amount of requests for people to link up with me or to have conversations with me. And I am really picky. So I'm sorry <laughs> if you're one of the people who's going, what happened to that? And I've had people do it to me as well for the best reasons. Either you can send a message back if somebody comes in saying, oh, what is it you want to connect about? Or, you know, nice to hear from you. Was there a particular reason? Um, and normally it's actually just people wanting to amplify their own sales network or whatever they're doing. And we all know that, but actually some people look verifiable or as if they may be credible, but actually aren't. And, and that's yeah. the sad thing. That's a reality that there's a huge amount of good in the world, but there are also those who just want to test you. So, so actually I always say to people, be really picky about who you accept and who you don't because people work these sites you know they that's their job is to work these sites so it's worth just just making time and hopefully i haven't offended no too many no people. <laughs> no it's okay thankfully i wasn't I, someone introduced us thankfully yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but, but, but what you were yeah. saying actually is so true. And I think actually, once you really realize sometimes these people are not, are not just after you for money. They, they, so this is like catfishing is basically yeah. what we're talking about. And, yeah. and, and, and sometimes they just do it because they want to control someone. They, 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 they want attention and they want someone to do what they say. Like that's one of the, the things that they, that they like. Then there is the money side of things. And sometimes they can put the two together. Sometimes they can't, right? But it can really damage your your relationships because then you go and introduce them to other people, and then um, and then they may do that to other people. So I'm I'm super careful now who I introduce, who I talk to. Uh, it's very very difficult because there's so much out there. It's such a big world out there, and and I agree. I mean, I think it's. Um, it's 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 difficult but it's it's something that you've just got to be super selective uh in in, in doing right you do yeah. and it comes back to that supply chain if you think about about the links so actually do do i want this person my supply chain or are they conversely having a look at my supply chain 
to see you know who's already linked to me so i think having real really good understandings mous or or protocols with the people that you do business with really matters because you need to feel confident that they're also looking after your credentials well. So that's, they're not going to be that weak link in the chain as well. Yeah, but also they say something about you are the sum of the, the five or 10 people that you spend the most time with. And I, and I, I kind of, I kind of have edged that way, really. I, I, I know it's really snobby and, and, and I'm sorry if I don't spend time with you, if you're listening to this, but like, uh, but like, like I'm really trying to make make some make yeah. some waves in the world, you yeah. know. And and yeah. and and if I hang out with people who aren't going to help me to do that, yeah, I can't I can't go where I'm going because there's no value shared. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you know. And it's it need. I don't like the American term the win win thing, but actually okay. there needs to be a win win. And, and my attitude is, if I'm the smartest person in the room, then I'm in the wrong room. <laughs> well. <laughs> I would hate to comment on that, but I, I was listening to a podcast just, <laughs> just yesterday and it had exactly that theme in it. So it was, it was saying that you are the sum total. So the people, five people you spend most time with. So that really can make you think if, you know, that influencing, if that positioning is really, really important to you. And I think one of the positive sides of the internet is that it does give you access to that. So Twitter can give you immediacy of contact. And I, I know because I've ended up in conversations that are going, oh, wow, that person actually read that or, <laughs> you know, they've replied to that. Um, and you can find yourself in this whole new world of working. And that's why, again, I think the, the work that the policing are doing around this with students is really breaking new barriers. It's really new ground. It's saying, you know, it's a very different profile for policing. It's a really direct engagement. But we all do need to be conscious all the time, I think, of our own our own profile, if you like, and that sounds, maybe sounds a bit um, over important. I don't mean it in that way. I just mean, is that what you want people to know about you? Is that, you know, where you want to make your mark? And for you, you know, there, there's, of course, it's important that you're meeting new people and great influencers. Everybody wants to spend time with people who really excite them, really fire them up and they come away and go, wow, I'll have a bit of that. You know, I'll take a bite out of that day in terms of it's going to be a great conversation. And that's, you know, that's what we all want. We all want to feel inspired. Yeah, yeah, very much so, very much so. So, yeah, I mean, I think in terms of what you're doing, you're looking for like uh, CISOs to reach out to you. You're looking yeah. for uh, businesses to reach out to you, like cloud, cloud data hosting businesses. Like We're looking for all sorts of business. So there's numerous okay. ways that companies can be involved. For larger companies who'd like to align with policing cyber strategy, please speak to us about the board levels that are coming in across the country. Um, for business, you can be a member at three different levels. It's all very affordable because it's not for profit and it goes straight back in again to the centers. And then of course, we're looking for businesses who would like the students, you know, and they are just great to work with. So who would like to learn from students who are still engaged in the latest stages of learning themselves. So that's real innovation. That's very live innovation. Wow. So masses of ways, CISOs, there's a cyber expert group as well, where we tackle big themes. So yeah, you can be involved in endless ways. <laughs> It sounds fantastic. It sounds super. So these students, um, what what are they are they on the the penetration testing course or are they on a cybersecurity course? What what sort of students are you are you talking about here? We're looking for students with very practical skills. So we're speaking to each of the universities in the areas where we are going in, and the universities have been fantastic in terms of being keen to. Um, not just provide students, but to engage in a whole range of ways um, with policing, particularly. So, of course, that makes a lot of sense. So, the the graduates, their undergraduates going through graduate courses at the moment, but we're also looking at broadening that. So, um, in Scotland, I did some work with the veterans community. So, 
veterans in some people's heads brings in the concept of older people, but actually people are leaving the forces just at a natural early age. And some of them have fantastic skills that are relevant and we're very keen on inclusion. So we will be bringing in, there will be the opportunities, there may be apprentices, of course, um, policing already have specials, they have cyber specials, they have a whole range of things. So it's not just um, graduate level, but the, the Curious Frank students that we're working to mentor and support our undergraduates going to be graduates. And as I said to you before, we had a large company say to us recently, I just stand at the school gates and take the lot because <laughs> they are really highly sought after. They come away with presentation skills, business report writing skills, fantastic commercial acumen, and a real understanding of how finance works in business. So all of these things. So I'm keen to keep that within policing for a while if we can. So I'm I'm speaking to policing about that just now. That's super, absolutely super. I think actually there's a lot of a lot of great ways to get apprentices right now, and interns and stuff. That you know, there's a lot of uh, schemes for the small businesses who who can who can kind of get those as well right now. So that's uh, that's quite an exciting time really. I think for business for the small micro micro businesses, it, it's 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 a great time if you if you're flexible enough to to listen to what people want. You can you can do great things right now, you know. And I'm trying to spread that word out there, you know. So it's been it's been lovely speaking with you. So how do people how do people find out more about um, about Brim and and all the great things you're doing with the government and stuff and small business? So so the policing input to this is NPCC, uh, the network are called Cyber Resilience Centers (CRCs). Um, and you can find them just by looking up CRCs or you can look up BRIM and our website is brimcenter.com and we'll be delighted to hear from you. And I'm on all the usual safe business network. <laughs> <laughs> and if you reach out with a message that actually means something, you might accept, right? <laughs> will, yes, it's the right message. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. It's been great. Thank you.